We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. We're going to celebrate the success of 2016, and we're going to start laying the groundwork for some big wins in 2018. To get us started, I'd like to welcome to the stage Pastor Terry Webster of New Corinthian Baptist Church to give our invocation. Shall we bow our heads? He that dwelleth in a secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It's with thanksgiving, Lord, that we come tonight to honor and reverence and magnify your holy and righteous name. Tonight, Lord, you alone is worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. And we come tonight in gratitude and gratefulness for all that you have done for all of us in this room. We bless you tonight for being hopeful of a better tomorrow that starts today. We thank you for those who you have placed in office from the White House to our state And we pray tonight, God, that they would be mindful that without you, in the words of Jesus Christ, that they could do nothing. But Jesus said, I do all things through the strength of my Father. And so tonight we pray that we would be mindful of that and and all our planning. May we not exclude you, but may we seek your heart and seek your mind and seek your spirit. Because if we do that, and if we're in your will, then your will is the right will. And tonight we thank you for all who have gathered in this room. We pray thy blessings upon all of them. We pray thy blessings tonight upon our speaker, Donald Trump Jr., that you would give him inspiring, encouraging words to share with us that may be fruitful and a blessing. We invoke thy presence on the remainder of this service and this celebration in this fellowship dinner. We ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every heart say amen. Thank you, Terry. Now joining me on stage... Fresh off her 2016 victory as Superintendent of Public Instruction, Dr. Jennifer McCormick. Joining her, sure, give her some applause. (laughs) Joining her is the group that will form the top of our 2018 Indiana Republican statewide ticket as each seat's re-election, Secretary of State Connie Lawson. (laughs) Treasurer Kelly Mitchell. and Auditor Tara Klutz. (laughs) Following the pledge, Emma Hill, a student at Bethesda Christian School in Brownsburg and a member of the Indianapolis Children's Choir will perform our national anthem. Will you please stand and join us as we say the pledge.
what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there and no say does that star spangled Better yet wait for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Great job. Great job. You guys can be seated. This, this is really a, a highlight of my night here and quite an honor for me. With a first class keynote speaker on the agenda, I knew that we needed to find just the right person to do the introduction. There was really only one choice. Having already served as chairman of the Indiana Republican Party before more, most of you were born, been a candidate for governor before some of you were born, and having been recognized for the humor he brings to politics, even when dealing with Ann Delaney. The name Rex Early has long been respected and revered in the Indiana Republican Party. But last year, he became a legend. At a time when many doubted it could be done, Rex Early stepped up to the plate and offered to lead the Donald Trump campaign in Indiana. He traveled around the state nonstop, building support and recruiting volunteers. And thanks to his efforts and the team he put around him, Donald Trump won both the primary and the general election in Indiana. When his state and country has needed him, whether as a Marine, a state party chairman, or to help a president like Ronald Reagan, or Donald Trump, Rex Early has always been there to lead. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage a true Hoosier legend, the chairman, Rex Early. Well, thank you, Kyle, for the kind words, and thank you for taking on the responsibility of guiding our party. I know firsthand the hours you will spend, and I'm certain the party is in great hands, because I've been there, done that, and got a t-shirt to prove it. <laughs> a year ago this week, 600,000 Hoosiers went to the primary polls and voted for Donald Trump. He carried all nine districts and received all of the 57 delegates. That day capped a remarkable run and really cemented the president's nomination. Up to then, both Senator Cruz and Governor Kasich were confident that Mr. Trump would not get the 1,237 delegates. Cruz was fresh, fresh off of a uh, big victory in Wisconsin and pulled all the stops to win Indiana, but at the end, it wasn't even close, and they both surrendered. Two months earlier, there wasn't even a Trump organization in Indiana, and for a while, it was really pretty lonely. Steve Hilbert, Ron Radcliffe, Tony Samuels, and Susan Jarwoski, and I believed, and many of you believed, and then many more of you started to believe. We all watched in amazement when huge crowds showed up 
early to hear the President Trump speak. But could he overcome the Democrats' anointed candidate in the storm of the media bias against him? And could he find, him, find a running mate who had his back in America's trust? Then came our own Mike Pence. <clears throat> you know, six months ago, many of us were in this very room nervously waiting the first returns. We had a lot at stake, not just the presidency, but our governor, a senator, congressman, and all the state offices. Indiana was the first to report, and it was a Republican landslide. <clears throat> Thanks to you and Hoosiers throughout the state, Indiana has spoken. Speaking of Hoosiers, I can't say enough about all of our great volunteers. They made thousands of phone calls and distributed uh, over 130,000 yard signs. And some of them got stolen off my front yard. And uh, <laughs> what, a great, what great Americans. And boy, those, those people, they went after Hillary like a fat boy goes after a muffin. <laughs> and then... It started to happen. States Mr. Trump wasn't supposed to win, one by one, starting to fall in his column. Ohio, Florida, Michigan, and finally Pennsylvania. What a night. Around 1 o'clock, what, what, what one year earlier had seemed impossible, became a reality. It was time to make American great again. You know, Ronald Reagan said something that fits here. He said, some people spend a lifetime wondering, wondering if they made a difference. Marines don't have that problem. You and our fellow Hoosiers don't have that problem either. We have made a difference. The primary that's often irrelevant may have prevented the biggest political infighting in history. I like to think that day really stayed and started all that was to come. Because of the significance of our primary, President Trump spent a lot of time in Indiana. It was a unique opportunity for many of us to get to know him and his family. What great people they all are, real people, genuine, friendly, informed, and all played essential roles in the victory. Their speeches at the National Convention were game chargers. Donald Jr. was here several times, and although I didn't hear it as well as I used to, I heard him tell somebody he couldn't be at a rally the next morning because he was going turkey hunting. <laughs> I can tell you, I really didn't need another reason to like him, but that just confirmed he was my kind of guy. By the way, Here's, I have a picture, and I showed it to him, of a, a turkey that I got two weeks ago, and I'm s still pretty good at that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome our, please welcome our speaker and my new hunting buddy, Donald Trump, Jr. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. You can keep going. Don't worry. I like this. Thank you very much, Rex. That was, a, that was amazing. And that was a true story. And the guy I was with actually is in the room, Chuck Paddock, who's a, a, a local native. And uh, we crawled through about 300 yards of freshly tilled mud because it rained all the night before. But I had one day to do it. And I figured since I did commit most of the last two years to a campaign and not necessarily hunting. I figured we got to get it in when we can. So uh, uh, it, it was a great time, and it's, it's really great to be able to be back here uh, in, in, in Indiana. It was uh, such an amazing time, and it's hard to believe that it was this time a year ago. And when I look back and think of really all the things that have changed in that time, it's, it's totally surreal. Uh, it's hard to believe. And this was really the start of it all, because I remember 
when I was here campaigning for a whole week, well, this one's the firewall. This is where they're going to break you. And I remember seeing the results on a, you know, primary election day saying, I don't know, 16 points seems like a lot. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure it's quite the firewall they thought, but I guess uh, we're getting used to some of that media attention or, uh, and the lack of their accuracy. But it, it, it was an amazing, an amazing thing. So when I got the call and they said, Don, wouldn't you love to speak at a GOP dinner? I said, uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, they said, it's in Indiana. I said, well, that's a no-brainer because if we did happen to steal your governor, it's probably the least I could do to say thank you. Now, that said, I think we did a good job filling in that vacancy. So uh, thank you very much, Eric. It's been a pleasure to get to know you and your wife. But speaking of our vice president, I'm walking to work this morning, bright and early, streets of New York rather loud during rush hour, and my phone rings. It's an unknown number. I reluctantly pick up the phone because usually that's media, and I say, hello. He goes, Don Jr., this is Mike Pence. I go, whoa, uh, wasn't expecting that, sir. How are you? He goes, I know you're going to Indiana today, and I just wanted to say thank you for doing that. Thank you for the effort. You know, thank you for going out there and supporting all the people that have been so good to us uh, along the way. And we, we spoke for, thank you. We spoke for a good you know, four or five minutes, and he asked me all the things about my family, and I'm saying, wow, I, this is the guy that we put in the vice presidency. This man who cares so much about people, not just about the politics side of things, not just about getting things done, and he's good at that too, but he genuinely cares about what's going on. I remember my brother, I had this conversation with him about a month ago when he announced uh, that he's expecting his first child. He goes, Don, you know who the first call was? I go, Dad. He goes, nope. <laughs> I go, well, it wasn't me. <laughs> he goes, it was Mike Pence. And it's the same thing. So I, I think it's not only a great testament uh, to the man uh, that we, but as Americans, I think it's not necessarily stealing from you because we as Americans are all benefiting from him uh, in D.C., but it's a great testament to the type of people that I got to know, have become friends with, and will continue to spend a lot of time with from this great state. Now, the other great Hoosier uh, who I spoke with today as I was sort of reminiscing, I got off the plane, I was at the hotel, I had a little downtime, I was reminiscing about you know, the, the week I had spent here and how the intensity of it all and uh, how much fun I had. And I remembered another great man that I had to reach out to and speak to, and that was Bobby Knight. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure many of you were at that rally, but you know, I, I've seen my father fill some pretty amazing stadiums. 25, 35, 40,000 people, I've, I've seen them go crazy. That was a whole different experience. Now, I understood this. As a sports fan, as an American, I mean, this guy, legendary coach in the history, but I was with some of my friends during that trip, and I go, okay, guys, I get it. Bobby Knight's a really, really, really big deal, but, like, explain just how big. And we were on this turkey hunt, going off to a campaign event where I was speaking somewhere else, covering a lot of the small towns, and we pulled through a small town. I can't even remember what the name of it was. It's, you know, literally population 400. Basically had a, a main street, a couple stores, and a diner. And he goes, let's just take a chance. We walk into this diner, which was about, let's call it, four times the size of this stage. And tucked away in the corner, about 20% of this diner was a shrine to Bobby Knight. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, it was, it, I couldn't believe it. He goes, that's how big a deal it was. And so I called Bobby today, and I just wanted to thank him uh, for the effort that he put in uh, for us in this state. And just talking to this man was just so amazing. And it continues to be, because it's just, it's such a surreal uh, experience. And he's still so gung-ho. He's still so excited about what's going on in this country, about the opportunity 
that we have right now. We have a chance to really reshape the rather poor direction that this country has been headed because we have someone who's willing to say the things that need to be said. Someone who's willing to do the things that need to be done to get things done. Not just to talk about action. Not just to talk about cutting regulations. Not just to talk about jobs. And I love when the Democrats talk about jobs. None of them have ever created a job in their lives, but they will talk about it ad nauseum. It's, it's always fun to watch because there is a big difference between theory and practice. But we have a great opportunity to do something special, which is why it's so important for us to not just sit back on these wins. And I'm not sick of winning yet. But we can't sit back. Thank you. We can't rest on our laurels. We can't take a big win at the presidency. We can't take an incredible young conservative Supreme Court justice in Neil Gorsuch and just bank on that. We can't take majorities in the House and the Senate and say, hey, they're, they're always going to do what they want because most of them on both sides are still in that D.C. mindset that I think my father will break. But well, we can do that, but we have to. We can win these, but we can't rest on those laurels. We can't sit back on those victories. We have to stay active, because the one thing I've seen is that the, the other side, they've used this to reinvigorate their party. Now, luckily for us, I think their message is totally faulty and flawed. I don't think their messages are particularly good or at all in touch with real Americans. And I think that's something my father's done very well. I mean, it may be a great dichotomy. It may be a great irony that sort of the brash billionaire from New York was the man that was able to actually reach and touch actual, hardworking Americans, people who haven't had a voice in generations. But he was able to do it by having a conversation, a conversation that's not necessarily easy to have. It's a difficult dialogue, but he was able to have a conversation with people, not at them. And I think that's a big differentiator. So when I see a room like this, and I hear it's a sold out crowd, I hear they've broken their records in terms of fundraising, and I'm sorry that I'm your speaker and that you didn't read the fine print that said junior at the end of it because you're... But it, but it is great to be back because Indiana has a big opportunity in 18. We can change the course of the Senate. We can give my father that extra vote that will probably be needed, a vote that will be all too important. I was inter it was interesting. I, was, uh, I spent just as a citizen now because I, you, you get a little taste of the politics, you get a little bit of the bite. and. I don't necessarily miss the politics, but you miss some of the action of the campaign. And so I said, listen, what can I do as an American, as a concerned American, to stay involved, to stay active? And ultimately, it's to be able to lend my voice to rooms like this for other candidates around the country. And last month, I was in uh, Montana. I'm going to go back out there on Thursday. And I was stumping for Greg Gianforte, who's uh, hopefully going to be the rep to take over uh, Ryan Zinke's spot when he vacated it to go to the Department of the Interior. And we're campaigning in Montana, having some amazing events doing amazing stuff. And I'm saying, where's all this money for the opposition candidate come from? They go, well, it's easy. It's coming from Los Angeles. It's coming from New York. You have candidates that are basically, as, <laughs> as Greg would say, Nancy Pelosi in a cowboy hat. <laughs> yeah, you believe it? A guy wearing a cowboy hat in Montana who's totally against, has an F from the NRA, uh, wants gun registrations, what... It wants to create a sanctuary state, this is what Montana is running as the opposition candidate from the other side. I'm saying, I think they're still missing it. They didn't get the message during the election, and they still don't get it today. But it's easy to run a flawed candidate if you're just throwing a lot of money at it. Didn't work out so well for our opponent, who outspent us five to one uh, in the big one, but it does work, and it is effective. So we need to stay active. We need to stay involved. Uh, and so w when I heard the numbers that we were able to do for a dinner like this tonight, it makes that, uh, and my trip certainly here, uh, really feel 
worthwhile, that we're accomplishing something. Now, we've all already thanked Rex for his amazing job here and everything that he's done, but there really are a couple, a couple other guys that I need to call out and, and thank. There's probably a lot more uh, in the room, and based on the number of selfies and people that uh, told me all the things that they did for us in the other room, uh, it's probably everyone in this room. So uh, if your name's not included, I'm still talking about you. Uh, but Tony Samuel, Kyle Hopfer, <laughs> Bob Grand. And of course, Governor Holcomb, you know, thank you all for your leadership. It, it is amazing to see that, and it is amazing to see those kind of rallies and people with political experience who had the foresight to uh, really back what was at the time a uh, very long shot candidate for the presidency of the United States. I believe, I don't know, what were the numbers? They, were, they hovered somewhere around 0% chance. Uh, but when you have someone who steps up to the plate, who does something that he doesn't need to do, who does something that a lot of people in his position, like my father, would never do. Because why would you welcome the onslaught, the nonsense, the lies, the smear campaigns to do it? But sometimes in America, as an American, we just have to step up. We have to act. We can't sit back. And that's why it's important to have rooms like this, because you all are doing the same thing that my father did when he took on uh, this mission, when he took on this task. And America is much better for it. So I want to thank everyone here personally uh, for all of your help and for your continued help, because you're not going to sit back, right? For your continued help. And we're going to have as big a win in 18 as we did in 16. So thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. I really appreciate it. It's good to be back in Indiana. All right, folks, so that was Don Jr. He Right now he runs the Trump administration ar along with Eric Trump. So um, he was just speaking at the GOP event in Indiana, and he's also going to go to other states throughout 2018 to stump for a bunch of um, other Republicans. So hopefully we um, they can get all the Democrats out or most of the Democrats out. So that's always um, a big possibility. Thank you very much for watching. If you guys uh, enjoyed and you're new to the channel, subscribe. And also check out the videos that we uploaded earlier today. If you missed the stream from earlier with uh, Sally Yates. Or if you missed yesterday's stream uh, with the, the, the thing that was going on with the Confederate monuments out in New Orleans. Uh, you can check that up on the channel too. And thank you very much for joining us, folks, and I hope to see you guys here next time. We stream everything that has to do with the Trump administration, special events like this, and also uh, breaking news, news stories, news videos, everything. Uh, we try to keep you guys up to date on everything that's going on. Uh, check out our website, goldenstatetimes.com, if you guys want to see President Trump's um, daily, you know, uh, what he's doing daily or any other information. All that stuff is on our website. Thank you very much for watching, and I see, hope to see you guys here next time. Peace. Lights less gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the red parts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets break a lair, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night 
that our flag was still there. And no oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave for the Great job. Great job. You guys can be seated. This, this is really a, a highlight of my night here and quite an honor for me. With a first-class keynote speaker on the agenda, I knew that we needed to find just the right person to do the introduction. There was really only one choice. Having already served as chairman of the Indiana Republican Party before more, most of you were born, been a candidate for governor before some of you were born, and having been recognized for the humor he brings to politics, even when dealing with Ann Delaney. The name Rex Early has long been respected and revered in the Indiana Republican Party. But last year, he became a legend. At a time when many doubted it could be done, Rex Early stepped up to the plate and offered to lead the Donald Trump campaign in Indiana. He traveled around the state nonstop, building support and recruiting volunteers. And thanks to his efforts and the team he put around him, Donald Trump won both the primary and the general election in Indiana. When his state and country has needed him, whether as a Marine, a state party chairman, or to help a president like Ronald Reagan, or Donald Trump, Rex Early has always been there to lead. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage a true Hoosier legend, the chairman, Rex Early. Thank you, Kyle, for the kind words, and thank you for taking on the responsibility of guiding our party. I know firsthand the hours you will spend, and I'm certain the party is in great hands, because I've been there, done that, and got a t-shirt to prove it. <laughs> a year ago this week, 600,000 Hoosiers went to the primary polls and voted for Donald Trump. He carried all nine districts and received all of the 57 delegates. That day kept a remarkable run and really cemented the president's nomination. Up to then, both Senator Cruz and Governor Kasich were confident that Mr. Trump would not get the 1,237 delegates. Cruz was fresh, fresh off of a uh, big victory in Wisconsin and pulled all the stops to win Indiana, but at the end, it wasn't even close, and they both surrendered. Two months earlier, there wasn't even a Trump organization in Indiana, and for a while, it was really pretty lonely. Steve Hilbert, and Ron Radcliffe, Tony Samuels, and Susan Jarwoski, and I believed, and many of you believed, and then many more of you started to believe. We all watched in amazement when huge crowds showed up early to hear the President Trump speak. But could he overcome the Democrats' anointed candidate in the storm of the media bias against him? And could he finally find a running mate who had his back in America's trust? Then came our own Mike Pence. <clears throat> laying the groundwork for some big wins in 2018.
To get us started, I'd like to welcome to the stage Pastor Terry Webster of New Corinthian Baptist Church to give our invocation. Shall we bow our heads? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It's with thanksgiving, Lord, that we come tonight to honor and reverence and magnify your holy and righteous name. Tonight, Lord, you alone is worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. And we come tonight in gratitude and gratefulness for all that you have done for all of us in this room. We bless you tonight for being hopeful of a better tomorrow that starts today. We thank you for those who you have placed in office from the White House to our state. And we pray tonight, God, that they would be mindful that without you, in the words of Jesus Christ, that they could do nothing. But Jesus said, I do all things through the strength of my Father. And so tonight we pray that we would be mindful of that and, and all our planning. May we not exclude you. But may we seek your heart and seek your mind and seek your spirit. Because if we do that, and if we're in your will, then your will is the right will. And tonight we thank you for all who have gathered in this room. We pray thy blessings upon all of them. We pray thy blessings tonight upon our speaker, Donald Trump Jr., that you would give him inspiring, encouraging words to share with us that may be fruitful and a blessing. We invoke thy presence on the remainder of this service and this celebration in this fellowship dinner. We ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every heart say amen. Thank you, Terry. Now joining me on stage... Fresh off her 2016 victory as Superintendent of Public Instruction, Dr. Jennifer McCormick. Joining her, sure, give her some applause. <laughs> Joining her is the group that will form the top of our 2018 Indiana Republican statewide ticket as each seat's re-election, Secretary of State Connie Lawson. <laughs> Treasurer Kelly Mitchell. and Auditor Tara Klutz. <laughs> Following the pledge, Emma Hill, a student at Bethesda Christian School in Brownsburg and a member of the Indianapolis Children's Choir will perform our national anthem. Will you please stand and join us as we say the pledge. Twilight. 